we are going to, so, so at this point we're done with our study of the polar decomposition. We have one little um, topic to cover and I'm going to do that now. Uh, it sort of, it's a slight change in pace because we are now going to take our um, deformation and strain measures and ask the question of how do we also include the effect of, of rates in there, okay, time rates, okay. So uh, the, 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 the topic we're going to cover here, and I'm just going to go to the next slide here, just, just to mark a break, uh, is the following one, okay. We are going to look at the notion of the velocity gradient. Okay, and what we're going to see right away is that by, by, that velocity gradients can be thought of as strain rates. Okay, we saw that the deformation gradient is our primary measure of, uh, well, not of strain, but of stretch and how we get strain from the deformation gradient. Uh, we did not include the idea of rates there. We're going to do that now. Okay, so let's start first of all by looking at what uh, often gets called the material velocity gradient. Okay, um, and we're going to uh, define it pretty much as we have written it up here. We're just going to com compute the material gradient of the velocity, right, of the velocity vector, right? Um, so the material velocity gradient is um, the following, right? It simply is dv, remembering that it is parameterized by capital X and T, okay, partial of V with respect to time, okay? Now, in order to write this out in more detail, we could, we could either just stick with this uh, or, or, oh, I'm sorry, I've written dvdt here. I meant to write dvdx. Okay, it's a material gradient of the velocity. Okay, now, this uh, we, we observe is simply derivative with respect to x of the derivative of phi with respect to time because that is what the velocity is, okay? Now, if our motion phi is smooth enough, we know that we can interchange the order of those derivatives, okay? And we will assume that indeed phi is smooth enough, okay? Uh, what this lets us do is to write this as um, the following. Okay, this is if phi is smooth. I won't right now de define what we mean by smooth. Just imagine that it's a, uh, a function uh, whose derivatives we can take as much as we need to. Okay, all right. We observe that here we have f, our deformation gradient, and therefore, this is just partial of f with respect to t, okay, which is often just written as f dot, right? Remembering that f is parameterized by capital X in time. So there is no ambiguity there when we talk of the time derivative, okay, because capital X is the reference configuration which is fixed, all right? So this part is clear enough, okay? All right, uh, however, the moment I wrote this out, you may have observed that there is another way to uh, talk of velocity gradients, right? In particular, observe that when I wrote this out, I wrote the material velocity parameterized by reference position and took its reference gradient we know we can do things differently, right? So we also have 
the spatial velocity gradient. All right. And what we mean here is that now if you're going to try, write out the spatial velocity gradient, what we start out doing is to say that, well, I want to start out with this parameterization of the velocity vector. Okay, and remember we call this the spatial velocity. It's the same velocity vector, remember, it's just a matter of parameterizations. Okay, and here we're talking of computing the derivative of this quantity with respect to little x. Okay? All right. Um, the way we do this is to uh, use the chain rule and the fact that we have these two different parameterizations for the same quantity for the velocity, right? So we will first write this as partial with respect to little x of V, capital V, x comma time. Okay? All of this remembering back here that little x is equal to phi of capital X and time. Okay? And then we observe that to compute the gradient on the right-hand side, we can invoke the chain rule. Right? So, we write this as partial of V with respect to capital X, partial of capital X with respect to little x. All right? But then we observe that for the first term on the right, we already have a simpler or a different form, right? Derivative of the velocity with respect to the reference position is simply f dot, right? And we observe that just above here. Right, we observe that here. Right? So, and, and then partial of capital X with respect to little x is just F inverse. So we have F dot F inverse. Okay? All right? Okay. So, um, so we will often denote Uh, grad written out like that, V equals this reference derivative, which is F dot. And we will, all, and we will sort of analogously write Nabler little v equals derivative of the spatial velocity with respect to spatial position, which we saw at the end of the previous slide, is f dot f inverse. Okay? All right? Coordinate notation. Okay? Let's go with the material velocity gradient first, okay? Here we're going to write partial of V little i with respect to x j, right? When things work out, this thing is just F dot little i capital J, all right? And this derivative Okay, it's just f dot little i j f inverse capital J little j. All right. Okay. Now, in general, neither of these velocity gradient tensors is symmetric. Okay, in general, they're both unsymmetric, okay? Um, so F dot, which is 
this and f dot f inverse which is that are unsymmetric okay it is common, however, to write the spatial velocity gradient tensor okay. It's common to write the spatial velocity gradient Right? It's common to write this, this quantity in terms of its symmetric and skew symmetric components. Okay? And we know that any tensor can be written in this form. Right? So the symmetric part of it is the tensor itself plus its transpose, half of that sum. Right? And the skew symmetric part of it is okay this is symmetric and is denoted as d this symmetric tensor is called the rate of deformation okay. and this tensor is skew symmetric it's commonly denoted as omega okay it is called either the spin or vorticity tensor Okay. As a final thing, I will recall that since omega is a skew symmetric tensor, it also admits this axial vector representation, right? So recall that omega acting on a vector u for all u belonging to R3. Okay. can also be written as an axial vector which following the convention we introduced quite a few segments ago we would write as omega hat crossed with u and in this case this is simply the vorticity vector okay this, uh, I, I should mention that the spatial velocity gradient tensor is used very widely in um, a certain kind of continuum body. Can you think of which type of continuum body or what type of continuum body the spatial velocity gradient is used commonly in? Fluids, okay? And the reason for this is, remember, with fluids, we have this picture, right? we have everything parameterized by a position in space and that position in space is this window okay and now we have fluid flowing past that window the appropriate velocity gradient to consider is how is the velocity changing with respect to uh, sorry this window or with respect to another window which i draw here okay and this naturally leads to this idea of a gradient with respect to the current or the spatial position Right? And in that setting, uh, the, the two uh, tensors we introduced at the end of the segment, d and omega, are the, the corresponding measures used in fluid mechanics to parameterize the, the stress, right? or, to, or to get a sense of the stress. The, the rate of deformation tensor that we introduced here, d, okay, is what often leads to this quantity. It often is used to write out the shear stress in a fluid. Okay. And the other tensor here, omega, 
for its uh, representation in terms of the vorticity vector here, right? Simply parameter simply gives us the extent of vorticity that there is in the fluid. Now look at this window. I'm shaking it up. Some part of the def of, of the velocity gradient you're seeing within that window comes from is, is is related to shearing, and another part of it, the part that you may you may be able to perceive some amount of spinning in it in that in that in that in that little window. Okay, that spinning is what we write out as the vorticity of the fluid.